Hey, this is Jonathan Gillum. I want to wish you a happy Friday before we start the show and give you your tasking for today. Yesterday, I told you I wanted you to go out and do something good for yourself. Well, guess what? I want you to do the same thing today. But here's what I really want you to do. If it's not raining and the weather's okay, I want you to get outside at some point and just go for a walk. Yeah, I know. A lot of you are big joggers and you work out and stuff. But listen, if you're not working out, you need to walk to get yourself moving and clear your mind and just enjoy the walk. If you're a big workout person, maybe you need to slow down for a minute and just take a walk and relax. That's your tasking for today. And also, go tell everybody about this show. That's an order. Let's get it going. This is Jonathan Gillum back on another Friday. <laughs> happy Friday. I don't really know what Friday means anymore, but I hope you have a happy one. Start to the weekend. Kind of seems like my whole life is a weekend now. But uh, there's some interesting things in the news. Uh, I, I'm going to cover this pretty quick. I'm not going to keep you here for a long time on a Friday because I don't think you need to be here for a long time on a Friday. But definitely the truth has arrived, and I'm going to show you a few things here that uh, really need to be looked at, including the fact that, evidently, if you go and paint White Lives Matter on the ground, you, you're a criminal. <laughs> so I guess if we painted uh, Blue Lives Matter, uh, I was thinking about trying to get some people together, and, and I'm, not, uh, I'm not an activist, so I'm a truth teller. But I don't really know exactly what the um, laws are and how what hoops you got to go through in New York City to paint uh, Blue Lives Matter on the ground somewhere. I mean, they're doing that all over, and they did it right in front of uh, Trump Tower. What's interesting about this, though, is that when when I pulled up this story from the Washington Times about uh, White Lives Matter illegally painted on city streets, police investigating. That was in uh, Martinez, California. Uh, when I when I started reading this story, and uh, you know, I was thinking about this today, earlier today. It wasn't my idea. I didn't originally come up with this idea, but it was a fantastic idea uh, by the Polita Diva. And uh, she said, you know, we should put, you know, Blue Lives Matter uh, in front of the uh, Gracie Mansion where uh, Thingbat de Blasio lives in New York City. Of course, other people jumped on that bandwagon uh, and have uh, already started maneuvering themselves to do that, but uh, for other reasons, uh, other than, uh, than Blue Lives Matter, I've got, kind of, I've got a little bit of a problem with it because the, the reality is uh, cops are getting killed, right? Um, other people just have... Uh, active interest in in uh, saying uh, certain things they they belong to PACs or they have a you know they have I don't know whatever their special interest is but police really do need to be protected and we need to get behind them now I, I think I've told you all about this on Sunday uh, at uh, Crocheron Park I think I'm saying that right I always say it wrong uh, let me look here. I think uh, one of the guys was telling me how to say that today. Let's see here. It's um, Crochon, Crochon Park. I thought it was Crocheron, but Crochon Park. Anyway, it's in Queens. And it's uh, uh, we're going to be there at 2 p.m. on this Sunday. And if you listen to this podcast and you live in and around New York, you should make the trek in and come to this. Because this is very important. It's very important that, that not only that we stand behind law enforcement, but it's very important that conservatives start realizing they actually do have something to protest now. You actually do. And 
when I talk about this story, you're going to, you're going to understand why now you, you have to realize, I, I get it Pro protesting. It's really a, a leftist thing. I mean, the, our founding fathers did protest, you know, the, uh, civil unrest or whatever they want to call it or civil disobedience, I think is what they called it with the, the Boston tea party, for instance, those things had real, real ramifications and, and let more than changing the, the actual protests themselves, changing things. It inspired a lot of people. And now I think you can see that protests inspire people. Um, the protests that are happening now are very interesting because they follow, uh, historically with all the countries that have fallen to, uh, communism and socialism and, and how that the young people, have jumped on board with this stuff because basically they don't, a lot of the times they don't have the same amount of work to do as the people who were busy all day and they're dumber. Uh, listen, I'll say it. This is the dumbest generation. I think probably in the history of this country because they're the laziest generation, the, the, the new high school graduates, whatever they call themselves, the, or whatever it is. Um, they're know-it-alls. And even millennial, I have more respect for millennials now. I was talking to somebody the other day who's a millennial. I said, man, I'd love to have the millennials back. I'd rather have that as their, them as know-it-alls because at least they would work. So what you're seeing now, though, with these young people and stupid people, I guess you could say, they are jumping on the bandwagon with the, these protests because they're inspired or because they, you know, they're passionate. Uh, I think we described, you know, I, we I described this stuff several shows ago about uh, the categories of narcissism. And one of those is um, the heroic type of mindset where they, they basically these narcissists and the way that they look at a lot of these things is that they, they, they they actually kind of fit into these categories, which we've talked about before, uh, with the glory seekers, the hero worshipers, the radical altruists, thinking that they can save everything, uh, and the lonely romantics. And so, a lot of people that protest fall into these categories, right? It's not that they're out there to make change as much as it is they're out there so that they can be seen as a change maker. And that's the problem is that, well, I mean, there's a lot of problems, but that's one of the problems is that they are, they're basically useless. They're useless and they're misguided and their motivation comes from a narcissistic standpoint. So they completely miss the mark. And this is historical, especially with young people in college, how they become the useful idiots for the communist movement. I'm just going to call it communist. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's socialist, globalist, progressive, whatever. It, it, let's just call it communism. I mean, we got to pick a word, fascist, uh, whatever. Just call it communist because it's, the end is all the same. Uh, people in power that uh, basically crush anybody that gets in their way until the state has all power. And the state could be one person, like a Hitler type, or it could be a monarchy, like a king and a queen. Or in the case of the United States, it could be uh, two political parties that completely don't give an F about anybody in this nation or about the nation in general or the Constitution. So what really stood out when I looked at these stories or this one particular story about white lives matter illegally painted on city street police investigating. Now, illegally painted on the street, right? I get that because, and that's why I was talking about earlier about, you know, I, I'm not an activist. So if we were to go paint uh, blue lives matter or just the, the police, you know, that flag with the blue, the black on top, black on the bottom, the blue line in the middle, whatever. I, I don't know the legality of that. And I would assume that painting on a street in a city is probably going to be illegal. So the headline typically technically is not is not wrong in this story. White lives matter illegally painted on a city street police investigate. But here's the problem that I'm having with this. As I read through this and it's in the San Francisco Bay area, they're not investigating this so much because they painted on the street. It's because they painted white lives matter and see 
they're doing it on the same day prosecutors announced charges against two people accused of defacing a city sanction. When I saw that, it, it caused me to pause. A city sanction Black Lives Matter sign. So the city will sanction the Black Lives Matter sign, but they will not sanction uh, a White Lives Matter sign on there. Now, I think all this is stupid. As I always, and I know you all are getting tired of hearing me say this, but I, I just am, a, my mom raised me right and enough. She raised me in a right way is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> she raised me in, in the correct way to understand that skin color means nothing. I remember, uh, in fact, and this is another, this was a profound moment for me also. I mean, I grew up with no racist bone in my body and, and my mom grew me to be a man of character and that's what i look for in other people but i remember in san diego uh i wasn't in the seal teams at this point i was going to college out there and uh some uh black guy pulled up next to me i was in my jeep and uh, he had like a jamaican accent he's a big dude and he's on a motorcycle and he said something about my jeep because we were stopped at a stoplight and he said um oh man because I didn't have the doors on it. And he's like, no, I don't want no Jeep, man. That uh, Those things are dangerous, man. And I said, a Jeep dangerous? You're on two wheels. I said, that thing is crazy dangerous. He says, no, no, no. And he laughs, and he drives off. We turn left onto the main strip going into Imperial Beach. And he drives like an idiot. He takes off, you know, just zooming through stuff, hits the back of a car, flips over that car and gets ran over by another car. I pull up my Jeep up there, block traffic, I get out there, go up to the, where the guy was laying there and pulled the motorcycle off of him. I seem to always be the first one to these types of crashes. I don't know where they over through. In my lifetime, I've been the first person on multiple accidents. So I pulled the motorcycle off of his head, basically, and he was not wearing a helmet. And I remember looking down at him because he only had a t-shirt on and it was ripped to shreds and his skin because he had severe road rash was the same color as mine if i took my the top layer of my skin off because i've had some road rash before from different types of things i had a bad motorcycle crash in 88 and i've had skateboard accidents skateboarding accidents i've had scooter accident as everybody knows that knows me <laughs> i've had a lot of stuff happen uh and in the seal teams uh, you know lots of injuries but I i've had the skin torn off of me before and there was nothing there but pink flesh underneath it's that stupid it's that stupid okay that that w we are actually that that we're actually acknowledging white versus black or black versus white lives or black lives over everybody else and, and importance. I mean, it's not like black lives do not matter and have not mattered in this country. So, but with all that being said, black lives matter. The organization is a communist organization who wants to overthrow this, this country. And when we look at the people who were involved with Black Lives Matter, uh, we, we've had uh, one of the women that was in Toronto that's one of the heads of, of Black Lives Matter saying that white people are um, a lower uh, subset of species. Uh, we've had um, Black Lives Matter uh, fully admitting that they're communists. Uh, we've had Black Lives Matter people saying they were going to burn the country down and multiple, multiple threats saying that they were going to go through and destroy statues of Jesus. And lo and behold, uh, the woman that is in charge of basically taking in the funds for, um, for Black Lives Matter is a woman uh, that her name is Susan Rosenberg, and she's a member of the board of directors for the, for the left wing uh, thousand currents group. And I'll explain who they are in just a minute. Um, and that's the one who handles the intake of donations made by black lives matter. I'll tell you why in just a second. So here's the interesting thing. Alicia Garza, she's one of the three 
co-founders of Black Lives Matter. Remember, I told you that these are communists, admitted communists at the top of Black Lives Matter. Um, she's one of the founders of the national organization, and she's repeatedly talked about how convicted cop killer and wanted domestic terrorist Joanne Chisimard, I think that's how you say her name, uh, who is in exile, I think she's down in Cuba, the last uh, that I'd heard, also known as Asada Shakur, is one of her main inspirations, okay? That's her inspiration. Uh, Susan Rosenberg, this woman that I was just talking about, who's in charge of collecting that money from the Thousand Currents group, uh, she is convicted terrorist who, among other things, was suspected of helping Shakur escape from prison. Now, the reality is that uh, Black Lives Matter is not a 501c3 charitable group. They use an IRS-approved 501c organization, and they could choose any number of these. Uh, they use Thousand Currents as its fiscal sponsor. Now, I don't know anything about this. I'm reading this off of the WashingtonExaminer.com. And so the donations made on the Black Lives Matter website through the left-wing Act Blue donation platform go to Thousand Currents, which says it then distributes them to Black Lives Matter. Uh, but we know and we've shown that it actually ends up in, in the coffers of the Democrat Party. And it's a lot of money that they're taking in. Now, why am I talking about this stuff? Well, because when I was looking at that story earlier, this is what bothered me. It wasn't, again, the whole thing about white versus black and all this stuff, stupid. I just can't say that enough. It's stupid. We are literally regressing because they're utilizing this on the left to gain political power. That's basically what this is, right? And they're trying to cause the division that communists want. And this is a game that they play, and it played throughout history. They, they come in and cause tremendous amount of chaos, and that allows them to maneuver strategically and politically to get power. So here's the thing that bothered me about this, was that it's city-sanctioned for the Black Lives Matter sign to be put down there. So the, the city which should be completely out of the racial business, but we know that, that, that all around the country that affirmative action uh, has always been a problem. And now quotas to say that, you know, we got to have this many minorities of whatever, and I don't even agree with the term minority. I think it's ridiculous. I think it gives power to special interest groups. Being labeled a minority it, it doesn't say, it, it totally ignores the opportunity that's in this country. And it also keeps us in the color rut where we keep comparing each other by color. So when, you know, the cities and the federal government are involved in recognizing color, you're not going to be able to get away from it. And that's what's happening here. The city sanctioned them to go out and paint Black Lives Matter just like they have in New York and in Washington and in Seattle. And then somebody goes out and paints White Lives Matter and and they're looked at as, as criminals for illegally painting it. And then other people went to another Black Lives Matter sign and painted over it with black paint. And they're also looked at as criminals. Now, let me just make this clear, okay, because the trolls love to take this stuff out of context. It's all stupid, right? It's all stupid. It's not going to do anything. And putting Black Lives Matter down on a street doesn't do anything except antagonize people, and, and it causes division. Look at where they put it down in New York City, right in front of the Trump Tower. That's just a total dick move on the part of the, the, the mayor here to allow that to happen. But see, politicians and these political parties use this stuff in order to gain power. These people think that they're doing something because they're narcissistic and they're passionate. And I'm not saying people who just follow Black Lives Matter are narcissistic. Um, it is a, an epidemic in this world right now of narcissism. And a lot of that's brought on by media and social media and so forth. And, and also, it's an epidemic of 
unawareness, which I've been saying that for a long time. And also just pure, like human beings went through a phase for a long time of being well-rounded. You know, you wanted to be somebody, you become a well-rounded scholar, a person, scientist, athlete, uh, not anymore. It's like, they don't even, nobody, the masses don't even try to do anything. And they would all be dirt poor and starving to death if the, if the government wasn't doling out money like crazy. So when, if somebody wants to come at me and say that this sounds like a racial statement, I'm not saying it's a racial statement at all. This is not about race. This is about stupidity and divisiveness and people that only care about themselves. It's not about fixing a problem. And so these cities are sanctioning black lives matter being painted on the street not because they want to save black lives. They're doing it because it's antagonizing and it causes anger and it causes division. And it it also rises people up that are looking for a cause. And even they don't realize that nothing's going to change over this. There's no humbleness in any of this. I don't think any of this stuff needs to be painted on a street or people antagonized, but but what you have to realize is it's not occurring for the reasons that these people think that are doing it. It's occurring because the leftists, the communists and their politician wonks and these big money people are, are allowing it to happen to cause the division. I mean, listen, it, as soon as you start recognizing, I mean, I thought we got away from this, but as soon as you start recognizing the color of people's skin and judging them on that or saying they're victimized because of that, instead of saying, you know, what is the problem? What is happening here? Are they, tr- and you never hear this, are they being victimized or is the things that are occurring, this kind of vicious cycle of violence and and uh, uh, authorities trying to stop the violence, and it's you know, and the whole culture without families and fathers, and and it spreads from there. Nobody's saying that. Nobody. Don Lemon had was talking about what he was saying yesterday. He used to say that. Now he doesn't even talk about that. They talk about and they they throw fake stuff out about these reports, the statistics. Statistics are the best way to lie and to carry out a big lie because they're, they're totally malleable. You can take statistics and make them sound however you want. The FBI, I've talked about this before. FBI saying, you know, we do, at any given time, there's a thousand terrorism investigations. Yeah, almost probably 98% of those, if not more, are people who somebody was pissed at him and they just uh, called the FBI and said, this guy's a terrorist. That's it. Or false allegations of some other kind. And they pan out to be nothing and waste thousands of man hours but we have to we have to vet these out and we have to do their surveillance and the and the investigation to find out if they are or not uh, uh, involved in a terroristic activity most of the time almost all the time it's not but that's all based on statistics that they tell congress when they go when the director goes there and and so statistics and people in charge with these narratives like when you listen to uh, Attorney General Barr, or you listen to John Durham. Well, you don't. Nobody really listens to John Durham. He doesn't really say anything at all. Uh, what you start to see is there's, and I've talked about this before as well, the ability of these people to punt the football and not do anything, but keep saying that they're going to do something and nothing ever happens. So when you add all these things together, what do you get? the makings of the beginning of communism or a dictatorship. And it's not going to be Trump. Trust me on that one. This president has never shown any signs and was not elected by people looking for change or divisiveness. The people that elected the president were looking for things to stop changing for things to stop progressing and to get back to the fundamentals of the Constitution. That's why he was elected, and to protect this country, to stop being dependent on other countries. That's why he was elected. That is not why people on the left are elected. Citizens that elect people that are leftists, they are looking to change. They are looking 
uh, to rise up to almost all the time, and they have an agenda. So it really bothers me when I read this story, and it, it is written in, in a way that other stories, uh, if it pertain to a, somebody who has dark skin, black skin, it's, they're not going to point that out. They never point that out in these stories. Uh, why? Because a lot of the times it doesn't really matter what color a person is, uh, except for the statistic that uh, black on black crime and those types of things. But after the person's done what they've done, I mean, you, you could say is a black guy that killed this person or a white guy that killed that person. But the stories involving a, a person that has a uh, white skin is that's always going to be pointed out. And so it really, it really does bother me. And this is something that I'm going to show you a couple of trends here of things that are happening and it should cause you concern because these are all going to be kind of linked together. All right. So the other thing, so we'll just put that to the side for a second. The white lives matter painted, uh, mural on the ground all around the country those are sanctioned by the politicians you want to go paint white lives matter it's probably not going to happen black lives or blue lives matter probably not going to happen um now here's another thing a u.s town in um where was this town at um residents of tenino washington are eligible for up to $300 in wooden banknotes each month to spend at local businesses. Now, I I was, at first when I read this, I thought that's got to be illegal. You can't print your own money. But I went and did a little bit of research, very little. Uh, but it, it appears that that's not illegal. It's illegal for states to print their own money. And you can't reproduce, of course, you know, the federal uh, currency. But I, I guess, I didn't know this, that you can, uh, uh, a, I don't know if it's cities or individuals, but it, it can't be states, but they can make up their own currency and use it uh, to trade and bargain with. I just didn't, I didn't know that that was the case. However, what you have to realize about what they're doing is that this is another form of this communist rebellion. This goes right along with the division because, uh, you know, the, if it's not, the, the color of somebody's skin, it's their sexuality, it's their gender. They're always looking for a way to cause divisiveness and to say that conservatives are bad and that we should progress to here. I mean, I know, I've worked with women in the FBI and in, in law enforcement, in the military. Uh, I know uh, women who are bankers and teachers. Um, and they say that the glass ceiling, you know, that they haven't uh, accomplished that yet and yada, yada, yada. But the fact is, you, if you're a female and you go work in a, in a business or you go, and I know why they always calculate, they have this calculation the way they, they say that women make less than men, but that's not actually true. Again, they use statistics and numbers to skew that number, but it's actually not true. They say it's like 70 cents less for dollars. I can't remember what it is, but I, I don't pay much attention to that because it's based on statistics. But these are all different things that they use to separate and cause division. And, and this, when I looked at this, this sounds exactly like something that a socialist group would get together and that a, that a, a town would hand out wooden, basically uh, wooden banknotes, almost as a form of welfare to keep people dependent on that town. Do you see how that works? Once you start taking that note, it doesn't matter if it's made out of wooden uh, or wood or if it's made out of dog crap. It doesn't matter. If it's worth 300 bucks a month, you're going to become dependent on that. That's the, way it, that's the way it occurs. That's the way it happens. And so people will end up, they will end up being dependent upon that money or that currency or whatever you want to call it. That is a, another total leftist move to get people to be dependent. Learn helplessness, dependency, anger, uh, and and then those other uh, four things that I had me mentioned before about the narcissistic, you know, so let me recap those things. Um, learned helplessness, they push that. They push dependency tremendously. They push divisiveness and anger. And then also glory seekers, 
hero worshipers, radical altruists, and lonely romantics. They, the left loves those people. Love them. Because everything that I just mentioned there is used to divide and to enslave. And yes, your ego can be something, if you feed it, can enslave you. Just like dependency or learned helplessness. Now, here is the one bit of good news out of all the news that I've looked at, and that is that Planned Parenthood uh, is steeped in white supremacy. Uh, there's like over 300 of the employee. No, let's see. Yeah, it's hundreds. I thought it was th 350 current and former staffers of Planned Parenthood of Greater New York, as well as about 800 donors and supporters and volunteers declared that founder Margaret Sanger, which we all knew this already, was a racist white woman, and the organization suffers from institutional racism. Now, the good thing is, is that they're eating their own. And I think that's happening a little bit faster than a lot of these people thought it would. But here's the, this is the profound again i look past the headlines when i look at the headlines and it says planned parenthood steeped in white supremacy employee supporters charge okay that that's the headline that's where they're going at but sometimes a lot of the times writers unintentionally especially if they're leftists unintentionally put the real story in there and the real story here i think there's several one is that when is the the communist movement of the cancel culture right they call it cancel culture, but it's actually a communist movement. Uh, that's one of the, the, the stories behind this headline on this particular page. Uh, the other is that um, it sounds like the people that work at Planned Parenthood understood and do understand, and so do 800 of the donors, that this company is steeped in racism. I'm sure this is not something they just discovered since George Floyd died. Here's the real story behind this, okay? 350 current and former staff and 800 donors are, are all of a sudden inspired to stand up and write a letter and stand with, with protest signs and lay their lives on the line or their livelihood and their jobs because of, of what they call institutional racism. But they don't do a damn thing about the fact that children are being murdered by the billions in this world. Yes, billions, billions of lives snuffed out in this world um, because of Planned Parenthood. And that's not mentioned anywhere in this story. Like they, you know, if it would have said 350 current and former staffers and 800 donors woke up this morning and realized they support murder or partake in murder of babies that are viable creatures. Now then I would say, oh, good Lord, they freaking got it, man. But the fact that they're complaining now and protesting that Planned Parenthood is racist. I mean, it's too little too late. And you're totally ignoring the fact that you're, you know, that there it's murder regardless of color. And yes, Margaret Sanger was a huge, uh, white supremacist. And she was also, uh, somebody who basically supported genocide. All of this, all of this builds a picture. I hope you're starting to see this picture as I just point out these few stories in the news this big picture of the communist movement and this big picture of how you, it is permeating, even they're either saying it out loud or it's behind the headlines. But overall, when you look, remember, I want you to remember this, okay? The totality of the circumstances, that is, or the totality of the evidence, just remember the word totality. When you look at something, the movement, or look at something that people are doing, if you want to find out if uh, somebody's cheating on you or somebody's trying to swindle you for money, look at the totality of the circumstances. What's their behavior? What's their job? Uh, how, how are they supposed to be in a relationship? What is their behavior like when you're doing this or when they're doing that? And when it comes to this movement, 
Look at the totality of the circumstances. If you're liberal and you're listening to this, or you know, you're you're black and you're listening to this, you, you should really look at the totality of this entire thing. It has nothing to do with making the world better for anyone. It is all about a power grab. And it just happens to be using this today. But the speed at which this has happened, and I've talked to several people in different companies, and I've asked them, I said, listen. Do you think, and they're not happy with the companies that they work with. I said, do you think that what is happening is a reaction or is it planned? Are these people, did they, have they been looking for this to happen? And they all said the same thing. Every single one of them. This is not reactive. This is action. They are taking action. And when you take action, it, it's something that you've been planning. These are ideologues that are in charge of all these companies. But fortunately, it's kind of like backfiring. It's not backfiring a lot, but it is causing issues. It's causing issues in their livelihood, and they hate that. A narcissist hates that. They don't like that at all. They like to be having a, a you know a good life and having people around them that love them uh, or hate them. Uh, but as long as they're on top, that's all they care about. So remember that. That's the main thing I want you to take away from this. And, and then as you watch television or do whatever you're doing this weekend, think about the totality of the circumstances. How are these things linked together? Because it's not just one thing over here and one thing over there. It's like, look at it this way. When you look at roads all around the world, they're the same width. Some places they go, you know, the, the steering wheels on a different side in a car, or, you know, you're on the left when you're driving forward or you're on the right, you know, whatever. Uh, but the width of the road is the same. The structure of the roads, it changes a little bit here and there, but by and large, it's pretty much the same. And why is that? Well, because it was by design. And when you, when you see in America and you say, okay, it's done this way, and you look over in Europe and you say, okay, it's done that way, it's pretty much the same. You're looking at the totality of circumstances. Is it because... Um, when you set two people side by side, that that's the way cars formed. Well, why wouldn't, didn't it form with eight? Why did they make, why didn't they make cars instead of putting two seats in the front and two seats in the back? Why didn't they just put four seats, uh, all side by side and the roads would be twice as wide? <laughs> well, that's probably why, you know, well, okay. Well, why aren't they single file? Well, I don't know. But, uh, but if you start to investigate that, you'll see the totality of the thinking and why the roads are the way that they are, why they lead to the places where they do. Another example is, um, you know, cities are, are pretty much liberal. Almost every city, large city you go to in the world is liberal. Well, why is that? You have to look at the totality of the circumstances. You know, um, they're generally, majority of the biggest cities are littoral. They're on the coast. Why is that? Because that's the way uh, things were uh, shipped back in the day and still shipped to, to some extent. So you get massive amounts of people there and people from all over the place. And so cultures become, uh, I like to say liquefied, but uh, they become, uh, the, the cultures get broken down. People uh, of different cultures intermarry and, uh, and then you're sitting on top of each other in these big buildings in these cities and these big apartment buildings and homes. And in order to govern those and, and make sure that the laws are in place, they become stricter. The laws become stricter because there's more people there. And then there's, I mean, there's a whole host, but you see where I'm going with this. I'm looking at the totality of the circumstances it also becomes more of a competition. That's why people act like asses that live in big cities more than they do in the rural areas. So when you, when you look at the news and when you look at the problems that are going on, keep saying to yourself, what is the totality of this? How are these related? Is it just people across the country that are mad because of what's been going on with law enforcement? And listen, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Uh, when I when I go to this march on Sunday, I'm going to say it there. Law enforcement has their problems. And there are plenty of sheriff's deputies like Van Buren County in Arkansas, worthless. Sheriff, the whole department's worthless. The sheriff is worthless. 
Uh, that stuff exists all over the place. Um, there, there are, uh, uh, I, there are racists in, in police. There are people who, uh, are, are total idiots because they were never trained or they were never weeded out from the beginning. And why is that? Mostly because of liberal ideology and because of liberal politics and promoting the wrong people. But with that being said, when you look at Black Lives Matter and the way that that is organized around the country, it's really not about law enforcement. The people that are marching may think it is, but as I'm clearly showing you through podcast and podcast and episode and episode, is that it is a communist movement using the problem that exists, the problems that exist, uh, to further their cause and to cause chaos. That's that's exactly what's happening. Well, let's take a break for a minute. I'm going to come back and just give you a little bit of a brief on John Durham and Bill Barr and the reality of what I think is going on with them. And uh, just stay tuned. We'll be right back. How many of you out there have a concealed weapons carry permit? And how many of you with those permits have ever thought about where you would have to use that weapon? When you would have to draw it and defend yourself against an imminent threat of loss of life or serious bodily injury? Well, if you haven't considered that and actually trained for it in your mind, you're not qualified to be carrying that weapon. You see, in the SEAL teams and in law enforcement, all these different avenues in which I've served, that is one of the main things that we go over again and again. Where would you have to use it and what are your rules of engagement before you actually use it? What has to happen? Now, you don't have to be a concealed weapons carry permitted person you could just be somebody who has a family. You could be somebody who is single and lives in a high rise in one of these in, in cities where just it's going crazy right now. The fact is, if you have not realized that you can make educated predictions of who would attack you, why they would attack you, where and when it would happen and how it would be carried out, you need to realize that that can actually occur. You can actually forward think these things. But you have to have a skill set. Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival is a book, a best-selling book that I wrote that teaches you how attackers look at you and it shows you how to use that knowledge to target yourself in every aspect of your life and then turn around and build better defenses based on awareness of who, why, where, when, and how you would be attacked. Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness, and Attack Survival. I've got two workbooks that go with it. Go check them out, folks. I'm telling you right now, this is not just a commercial. This is an offer for you to get the best type of awareness and training that you could possibly have. It's available anywhere. Books are sold. Amazon, Barnes & Noble. It's out there. Order it. Go get it. Give me your feedback, and if you have questions, you can always reach me on social media, and I'll answer those questions for you. Sheep no more, the art of awareness, and attack survival. And let's get back to the show. Now, I just want to say one other thing. I mentioned about John Durham. When I, I, there's a couple episodes back, I think it was episode 53, where I had uh, uh, played the Brett Bear interview of Christopher Ray, and Christopher Ray, the director of the FBI. And as I went through this, I, it, it was, and I, I really suggest you go and listen to that podcast. It'd be episode 53. You're going to see where, because I have experience in the FBI and because I understand how the, you know, the government works and how this narrative of these, uh, the executives in, uh, in the government, these senior executive service members, their, their narrative, how ridiculous that narrative is when they spew stuff and they, they give excuses or short answers or they uh, minimize or they say certain things to deflect and when you listen to that interview with Brett Bear, it's about halfway through the show. Brett Bear and Christopher Ray, it is unbelievable. It's uh, it's crazy uh, the question, the answers that Christopher Ray gives. Like for instance, he said that. 
So here's what I want you to concentrate on from this point forward. I want you to think about the totality of the circumstances. Don't just look at a headline or read a story and think that the headline told you exactly what's going on. Start to look for sub stories or points of facts in there that will help you understand the motivation, the people that are behind these things and their ultimate goals. And what you'll start to see, especially if you start focusing on the term communism, look that up, see what it means. Start looking at that and how they work historically and start looking for those breadcrumbs. Because ultimately, if you find the totality of the circumstances, the picture of who is doing what in this country will be revealed. I'm Jonathan Gillum. This is The Experts. The truth has arrived. Peace and we're out of here.